Hello and welcome my wonderful friends, it's Chris here and today I'm excited because I'm going to talk about praying mantis egg cases. So they go by egg cases, Uthika, um, egg sac, there's a bunch of different names for them, don't get confused by that, they all mean the same thing. It's just a sac that has eggs that praying mantids swim out of and then you have a bunch of fun with it. So um, I'm going to break this video down into who, what, when, where, why and how of raising, of hatching praying mantids. So if you feel free to, if you want to, to get certain information, you can skip throughout the video because there's going to be a lot of information about these guys and a little bit of rambling as well. Of course, I'm a rambler, I like to talk. So number one is who should get these and why should they get them? Um, anybody can get these praying mantis egg sacs. They're really easy to buy online and I'll talk about where to buy them later on. But um, the reasons why you would get them is two. They're, they're, it's either for fun or to kill insects. If you're having a pest problem in your garden or something like that, uh, you can put them outside and they might help with your pest problem. If you're, having, if you're doing it for fun, more power to you, man. They're really, really fun. They're really, really cool. You can do them as like a science experiment or something like that. And uh, um, personally, I'm doing it for fun, so I'm excited. Uh, I think they're really, really cool, and uh, it's up to you if you want to do that. Now, if you're doing it uh, for not for fun, but you actually want to have these guys like kill your pest insects outside, that's totally cool too. You know, I mean, obviously they're going to eat a lot of uh, a lot of the smaller bugs that are probably um, killing your crops or killing your tomatoes or whatever, and they'll help protect them. Um, they don't do an amazing job defending all your plants. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people have problems with aphids and the praying mantis will not eat aphids. They only eat things that will fit in their arms and they can actually eat. So usually things that are about the size of the praying mantid or um, a little bit smaller. They don't usually eat things that are crazy small where they can just like pick them up with their mouth or anything. So if you want to have, if you have an aphid problem, ladybugs are the way to go, not praying mantids. Um, so what are they? What, is that? what the heck is this thing? It's an egg sac. So it's really cool when the praying mantis hatches it, or, or lays it actually. It's kind of like a foam. So you'll see like their body like squirting it out kind of. It's like a little foam and then as it hardens, or as it dries, it gets really, really hard and it forms this little egg sac. And what's inside is anywhere from about 50 to 200 praying mantis eggs, which slowly develop into like a kind of larval worm looking thing. And then um, when they hatch, they're actually, uh, they are praying mantids. They're not like a larva or anything like that. They will be a little version of the praying mantid or a praying mantis. So that's what this thing is, is it, can have anywhere from 50 to 200 in there. And um, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to see them. And, and don't be be surprised by how many will come out of this thing. Like this guy right here, I mean, it doesn't seem very big. It doesn't seem very big at all. I mean, it's like, oh man, it's a little tiny thing. 200 came out of this thing already. Yeah, it already has hatched. So uh, I don't know, really, really cool. I, I'm just excited. <laughs> All right, so when the heck should you get these things? Well, if you're buying it, let's talk about if you're buying it first. I think that's probably the majority of people. If you're buying these guys, make sure you buy them at the right time. Don't buy them too early. Um, you want to make sure when you buy it, it you've got to give yourself at minimum four weeks before it's not going to freeze anymore. For example, if it's going to, in your area, if it freezes at, if it can freeze at the beginning of May or the end of April, don't buy them until at least the end of, or at least the very end of March or the beginning of April or something like that. You do not want the praying mantids to freeze. The baby praying mantids will not do well in freezing temperatures. They'll probably just die. So, um, make sure you're buying these at the right time. You can, they can hatch anywhere from four to 10 weeks. So you don't, you don't want to go crazy and, and, you know, buy them, you know, in June or July or something like that, because you know you might not hatch until August, and you're not going to give them enough time to 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 grow up and, and get big and have babies or anything like that. So uh, that's if you that's if you're actually buying it. Make sure you buy it at the right time, about four weeks before it's not going to freeze anymore. Um, if you found it outside, if you found it in spring, it probably has hatched already. So don't even worry about it. Don't try and bring it inside. It's just it's gone. It's done. Um, he found it in fall, on the other hand. Uh, you can bring it inside if you want to, though I highly recommend just leaving it outside, letting the praying mantids hatch out, and you'll have baby praying mantids walking around in, in spring. But if you really, really want to bring it inside, you can, but it needs an overwintering period. So don't just put it on your 
dresser out there and think it's gonna do just fine. It, it doesn't work. You need to keep it in cold temperature. So don't put it in the freezer. That'll probably kill them, um, sadly, actually. But uh, put them in your fridge. So you can put them in like a brown paper bag or a plastic container or something like that. Keep it a little bit on the, on the moist side in there. You know, make sure you don't keep it completely dry. Uh, and they should be fine. But yeah, you need to overwinter them, so you need to make sure that you keep them uh, um, reasonably safe in the fridge. Don't crush them or crunch them or anything, they, they won't survive. And um, again, take them out about four to ten weeks before you want them to hatch. Probably about four weeks is probably best. But do not put them in a an airtight container because guess what? Insects need to breathe. Yeah, they actually do need oxygen. So I heard of some people putting them in like plastic bags and stuff like that. I'm like, no, don't do that. That's stupid. You're just going to kill it. You're just going to kill it. And that's probably why they didn't hatch. Makes sense. Um, what about how? How the heck are you going to hatch this? So I think most people probably have this question. How the heck should you ha hatch a praying mantis egg? It's fairly simple. Um, leave it alone for the most part and keep it somewhat humid in that container. That's, that's the basic necessity of it. Uh, but you do need a little bit more information. You need to make sure that you, are, you keep it elevated, you keep it up, and let gravity do its work when they do end up hatching out. Because when they hatch out, what they're going to do, so hopefully this isn't too blurry. I know it's hard for it to focus on both of us at the same time. But when they hatch, they're actually going to come out of little slits or gills inside this egg right here, and they'll pop down off of little silk strands. And you'll see a big bundle of them. If you guys have seen my hatching video uh, that I just uploaded a little while ago, you'll see a big bundle of a bunch of praying mantids um, drying out and like hatching out of here. And this is actually all of their exoskeletons from the from the uh, larval stage, whatever, man, the egg stage, whatever you want to call it. That that's like their exoskeleton that they break out of when they finally turn into um, uh, little baby praying mantids. So when you do this, you want to make sure that, again, you allow gravity to do its job. So you need to hang this guy somehow. So you can do it a couple different ways. The best way, in my opinion, is if you notice back here, um, again, hopefully you guys can see this, there is a big slot right here where a stick used to be. So they didn't, they didn't send me the stick. They probably should have. But um, the stick used to be right here. And on some of them, you'll actually have like a hole where you can easily slide a stick through. And then if you have the stick sliding through, you can do something with the stick to keep it elevated and make sure that they can, you know, actually hatch out of there. Otherwise, you're going to need to do something to this egg sac to keep it off the ground. I know that I've seen some people, they take like a, 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 a twig with like a, you know, like a kind of like a, uh, a Y twig and they'll put the, the egg sac in between there like this. Uh, you know, pretend my two fingers are a stick. You can do that. Um, just make sure that, uh, you know, if you do end up doing that, you have area on the bottom and you have it aligned the right way. You can't do it any which way. You need to make sure that it's opposite of the side with the stick on. So the stick is the top. This part with the stick is the top and the other side is the bottom. It's not like a beehive. It's, it's stick is top, other side is bottom. Um, so make sure if you do do that, you have area underneath it where they can actually drop out of. Don't put it on a little little Y twig where it's like all the way at the bottom there, you're just going to crush them. You don't want that to happen. You want to keep it like, like this or attach it with what I did was a twist tie. So some people might use zip ties, but I attached mine with a zip tie. So what I did was um, there was like a little bit of foam on the top up here where I could easily slide um, a little foamy part of the egg where I could easily slide just a little bit through there and I just tied it around. That's all I did. So um, this is important though. A lot of people, they don't, this is why they don't hatch is because they put it the wrong way and then they don't let gravity do its job. These guys, they, they don't really have, they're like little worms when they come out. And worms don't really, can't really go against gravity very easily. So do it the right way, otherwise you're going to have some issues. Um, but when you have them in these containers, make sure you keep it fairly moist on the inside. The way I did it was I used, I took a big piece of paper towel, uh, a full a half piece of paper towel because you know I have those uh you know use they used to have the full sheets now they have the half sheets pretty much so I took the half sheet of paper towel and I just soaked it with water and I put it in there now how can you tell if you have too much water in there if there's ever any water on the outsides of your container or the insides of your container too much water bad terrible don't do that um but if you ever have your paper towel completely dry out you probably don't want to have that happen either now there, it's not like the if it's not like they're gonna die if you don't have a wet paper towel in there at all times. But it's better to keep them moist. So that's what I did. I used to, I changed it about every week. 
um, depending on the humidity of your house and how fast that thing dries out. But I used to just almost soak it, you know, just wring it out just a little bit, drop it in there so there's not any excess water on the rest of it. And uh, um, that's how I kept them humid. Now, again, do not keep any extra water droplets in there. Not only will it maybe get moldy because you keep it too wet, um, if the praying mantids do hatch out on a day where there's water in there, they will drown. They need to dry out. They're, you know, when they come out of their shell, they need to dry out to get their exoskeleton hard. So if you keep it uh, wet in there and you have water everywhere, they won't be able to dry out and they'll drown and they'll die. So <clears throat> be a little careful with that. But that's pretty much it for how you should hatch a praying mantis egg case. And the last thing is, is where do you get them? Where should you buy one? Um, you can look outside if you want, especially if you have an area with a lot of praying mantids. Kind of fun if you want to, like I was telling you guys a little bit earlier, but you should probably buy it. It's just a little bit better to buy them, um, especially for pest control or for fun. Um, number one, you can buy them from a, a hobbyist, so somebody that does this kind of stuff for fun. And what you're doing is you're allowing them to make money off of something that they do for fun, which is a really great way to support people. Uh, and usually they do a pretty good job of sending you extra egg cases or keeping you happy and keeping you as a return customer if you do plan on buying more of these guys. So whether it's eBay or you know any of those other websites where you can buy things from random people, um, that's a really nice way to do it. Personally, I bought mine off of Josh's Frogs, or from Josh's Frogs, which they're in California. They have a pretty nice online site where I buy a lot of my feeder insects and um, a lot of my other stuff uh, for my animals. So um, I like them. Um, and like I said, I had two egg cases that both hatched 200 praying mantises, so I really can't say anything about it.